Good morning, Henry Street. I want to welcome each of you to the Sunday morning worship service. As again, we've been blessed uh, to get through another week and to be able to come together to share on another worship service. We just appreciate all of you who come to be with us. Really got more people than I was expecting this morning. You know, the weatherman had to predict it, uh, the forecast is inclement weather, but he didn't say when it was going to start. So <laughs> maybe the Lord has uh, decided to let us do this and then let it come late. However, we're glad to see you this morning, and we just appreciate you being here. If, you, if you're listening from home, we want you to know that we uh, appreciate you tuning in and actually continue to do so. And at this time, we're going to begin by calling our son leader up. Notice page 63. Restore my soul and the submit. Right. Restore my spirit, Lord. I need restore my heart is weary. Please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Fear my faith, oh, restore my soul. I revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Light in my heart, dear God, your zeal from Thirty-nine. I still have joy. Page thirty-nine. I still have joy. Everybody have it. Listen. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have. I still have joy.
I want to say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let the church say amen. amen. Our scripture this morning will be taken from uh, the book of Titus, uh, first chapter, verses 10 through 11. That's the book of Titus. Verse 1. Uh, chapter 1, rather. I'm sorry about that. Verse 10 through 11. Our scripture will be taken from the New King James Version. Everybody have it? Say amen. And it reads, For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. And may God add a blessing to uh, each and every one who hear and obey his word. Amen. Let us all go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us bow, please. Our Father in heaven, is once again we bow our heads, Lord, and humble our hearts to you, Lord. Looking up, praising thy name, Lord, giving you the honor in which you deserve, Lord. And we're just so thankful this morning with thanksgiving in our heart to be able to assemble under the bloodstained battle of your Son this morning, Lord. And uh, uh, being here in worship in spirit and in truth, Lord. And uh, we just... I uh, want to just thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, for we are nothing without you, Lord. It's in you we move, breathe, and have our being, Lord, and uh, none of it would be possible without you, Lord, and uh, we just want to get you the honor in which you deserve, Lord. We bow this morning, Lord, thanking you for your son, Jesus, who died that cruel, cruel death on Calvary's cross for the whole world's sins, Lord, and uh, uh, your grace and your mercy, Lord, that you give us, Lord, that we do not earn in no kind of way, form, and fashion, Lord. It's just your love for us that provides us, Lord, with the path forward on being with you in the last day, Lord. And we just continue to uh, uh, honor you in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. We bow this morning with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, just to uh, let us know that we are able to be here to recognize you, Lord. And we uh, pray for the sick and the shut in everywhere, especially those here at the household of faith. Lord, we bow praying on behalf of Sister Sawyer, Lord. We ask that you will continue to uh, bless her and build her health, her health up in a way, Lord, that she regained her, her full strength and health, Lord. And we bow praying on behalf of the Heath this morning, Lord. We bow praying uh, on behalf of Brother Heath's brother Aaron, Lord, that you continue to bless him, Lord. We know that you uh, allowed him to come through his surgery uh, uh, with good signs, Lord, that he'll make a good recovery, Lord. And we just so... Uh, thankful for that, Lord. We ask that you continue to be with uh, Brother Heath and Sister Heath, Lord, through these trials and trying times with a sick loved one, Lord. And we pray on behalf of Sister Terrell, Lord. We pray that you just continue to bless her, Lord, give her strength and help, Lord, uh, in a manner that she will regain her strength, Lord, and is able to return home, Lord. We pray on behalf of the Mitchell family, Lord, that you would just continue to be bless them uh, during their trials, Lord, and we ask that you just improve their health issues also, Lord, and we also come praying uh, uh, on behalf of the Churches of Christ everywhere, Lord, uh, uh, we ask that you continue to bless us, Lord, we ask that you continue to let us be able to assemble, Lord, to provide the church the pathway forward, Lord, and with your help, Lord, we are blessed to be here this morning, Lord, and 
we also come praying, Lord, that you would just give us the uh, knowledge that we need, Lord, to uh, uh, escape this dreadful disease, Lord, and the wisdom to apply the knowledge, Lord, that you give us, Lord. Let us be safe, Lord. Let us be able to help one another during this uh, uh, pandemic, Lord, and we pray for the leaders of our land, Lord. We pray, pray a special prayer uh, uh, for our government and our president, Lord. We ask that you would just let them make good and sound decisions on behalf uh, of the whole country, Lord, that they'll be able to uh, uh, make the decisions that are fitting and proper for all of us, Lord, and not just a few, Lord. And we also come praying this morning on behalf of our minister, uh, Brother Noel Wood and his wife, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to crown his head with the knowledge that he stands in need of to bring the message, Lord, that you would have us to heal, Lord, each and every time we are similar, Lord. And we also come praying, Lord, that you would just let us be able to cling closer and closer unto you, Lord, during these trying times, Lord, that we must be vigilant, Lord, and always look around us, Lord, because we uh, know that uh, uh, we have uh, Satan as a, a roaring lion, Lord, is after us in a manner that persecution continue to press upon our hearts, Lord, and let us be able to resist him and you said in your word, and he'll flee from us, Lord. And we pray that you be with us throughout this wish of service and everything be pleasing and acceptable unto you. We pray that you go with us, be with us. Keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mark the hymnals. The song of invitation is page 218. Uh, that's a fountain free. And the uh, last song before we get into the message is uh, Heavenly Sunlight. Heavenly Sunlight. Everybody have it? Let's see. Walking in sunlight all of my journey. Over the mountain, through the deep veil, Jesus has said, I never forsake thee, a promise divine that never can fail, in heavenly sunlight. Messed up. I started at the wrong place. That's all right. <laughs> we'll start at the right place. In number two. The shadows all around me. The shadows above me. I never conceal my a savior and guide. He is the light. Him is no darkness. I ever I'm walking I close to his side in heavenly sunlight. I have a 
church once again say amen. amen we are truly blessed as always to be in the house of almighty god i don't know about you but i look forward to sunday mornings i look forward to being able to give god the praise and glory and the gratitude that's in my heart for all he's done for me through the week as well as providing me a church family here at the henry street church of christ um, my heart is, is goes out to you and enjoy every one of your co company. But most of all, I know I'm speaking for all of us when I say that this is our opportunity to thank God for giving us Jesus, who suffered, Amen. died, and rose again, that you and I may have a chance at eternal life. I don't know about you, but some folks today I know have were scared about inclement weather coming. But you know what? I'm not scared of that weather because I still serve the God that was able to walk on that water. Still able to serve the one, the Savior that was able to tell the waves, peace be still. And they were able to calm right down at the command of him that also said that I'm with you always, even until the end of the world, as well as he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So he's in power right now over everything that we do, the weather, all of that. And so let's go ahead and give the sunshine the praise that he so rightly deserves. Amen. And of course, I'm not talking about S-U-N shine. I'm talking about S-O-N shine. I'm talking Amen. about Jesus Christ. And I thank our song leader for uh, leading us in that song, Heavenly Sunlight, as we walk in the rays of love that emanate from Jesus Christ, who suffered, died, and rose again, that you and I may have a chance at eternal life. I'm thankful for all of you coming out to worship God in spirit and in truth here today that are members of the Henry Street Church of Christ, but I also want to thank you who are visitors with us as well. Uh, you are always our honored guests, and we always want you to know that you're welcome to worship and fellowship with us once again. We typically have people that view in with us uh, virtually on the broadcast from the Philippines, uh, from Nigeria, from India. So we welcome our brothers from these three countries as well as the nations in which everybody uh, unites under the banner of Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. I'm also thankful for my wife for her continued love and support and for our leadership here, for our two uh, elders here, for the fine job they do through the week and what they have also done this Sunday morning and, and providing leadership and their portions in the worship service and all the brothers that have served so far. far. Thank you as well. Well, let's go ahead and let's get into the Word of God. Uh, starting in Titus chapter number 1, let me reread it to you again. And repeating as our elder, one of our elders has done out of New King James Version, out of verses 10 and verse number 11, to set our hearts uh, forward in the path that we're going today regarding the Word of God. 
Titus chapter 1, verse 10 and verse number 11 says, For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. Again, that was a rereading of God's word directly from Titus chapter 1, verse 10 and verse number 11. We're going to continue down the path of the series we started last week entitled, Why I Don't Go to Church. Why I Don't Go to Church. If you remember or were with us on last occasion, last Sunday morning, there was revealed to you 15 reasons why people say they do not go to church as the world would say it. We typically say the worship service, so I'm going to use those words interchangeably, meaning the same thing, to formally assemble with the other saints of God to worship collectively and individually regarding what God has done for us and him that is in heaven. Remember, we're a church. I'm talking about the church, John 4, verse 24 that goes by what God said, not what man said, where the Bible says that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you're going to get nothing but the absolute, loot, un uh, perverted, unadulterated, undilated word of God here and nothing else, if you so will, church. So we're going to talk about, again, part two. We're just going to talk about two different topics. We talked about three of the reasons last time we're going to take two topics here because these are major and we're going to call it a day from uh, God's word but again it's a sad topic that we're endeavoring upon today being why I don't go to church unfortunately it makes my heart sadden it makes tears stream down my eyes when I think about how many excuses people give not to come to worship service how Satan has really done a number, if you will, uh, a deviously effective job in keeping people away from the church and making them think that it's okay in order to do so. But if I can give you a short message right now and develop it a little bit further on, we know that that's all hogwash. In other words, it's nonsense. It's more lies from the heart of Satan to keep people from being close to God, to keep God from getting his praise and glory. You have to understand something about the enemy. The enemy will fight God tooth and nail. He's going to fight him at every detail. He's going to fight him all the way from Genesis to Revelation because he, he wants to be God himself. But we know there's only one God and he's in heaven and gave us his son who died for us. So we're never going to submit to the authority to rule or the trickery of Satan because he's nobody to us. Amen, somebody. Hope you understand where I'm coming from here today. But unfortunately, I'm not giving him glory. I'm just being real. He has done a major damage to the minds and the hearts of men. He has discouraged too many from coming to worship service because some organization, and I call it organization because everywhere you go ain't the church, even though they have church on the outside of the building. Let's be honest about that. There are many organizations out there who claim to be the church that God never set up in the first place. Man set up these places, so wherever man set them up, man's rule is going to apply, and also man's corruption is going to go forward if it's set up by man. So again, many have discouraged people from coming to worship service because some organization has tarnished the name of Christ because of financial greed. Yes, I'll sadly admit, but I will freely admit that there are men who are nothing but spiritual sharks in the water who smell blood and look for naive people in order to take advantage of them spiritually, I mean, excuse me, financially, because of their own greed that's in their hearts. This is truly one of the most wicked things the enemy, Satan, has done, causing mistrust of God's true church, and then even more, it caused them to, the people of the world that he is, that buy into Satan's lies, that are convinced by them, to mistrust not only the true church, but also those that are true preachers, that preach nothing but the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ, 
that are not after anybody's pocketbook, if you will. Not after anybody's financial means. Not after anything that emulates from greed. They're out there. They're good preachers, but they're stereotyped as being corrupt because of the one bad apple that has uh, corrupted the whole bunch or made people think the whole bunch is corrupted. But I don't know about you, but when you go into a grocery store, when you see a bad apple, you just throw the bad apple out and you eat the rest of the good ones. Anybody know what I'm talking about Man. here today? You don't make a whole batch bad just because you ran into one bad one. Amen, somebody. If you did, you starved to death, wouldn't you? Amen, somebody. If you really know what I'm talking about here today. You see, it may be no consolation, but this problem of, of, of people in the pulpit who are wolves in sheep's clothing, it's nothing new. This is something that has been going on since the inception of Christianity. Meaning it's been going on for all, over 2,000 years, even until this day. How do I know this? Because even the Apostle Paul, a man that lived 2,000 years ago, who was inspired by the Holy Spirit, he addressed this problem of corruption, meaning financial greed from the pulpit, if you will, almost 2,000 years ago. He was talking about there being false preachers and teachers who are only doing things for financial gain. You see, folks, uh, Paul called them insubordinates which means they never allowed their minds and their hearts the ability to submit to the word of God, which would have resulted in them being honest men of God. They were idle talkers then and today, which means they say any empty, empty that is, useless things to attract crowds and deceive the naive. And yes, the love of money is the main reason for their lies, for their heartless deception, for their greed that cannot be satisfied, and for their lack of concern for the ones that they're taking advantage of financially. I'll be honest, they're out there, but you got to know how to spot them Amen. so that they don't take advantage of you. But, because, but, but notice that is, the Bible, even though it paints this picture of men who are, sheep, are wolves in sheep's clothing, it never gave us an ouch from coming to worship service. I hope you know what I'm talking about here today. Mm -hmm. Just because there have been bad men that have done bad things over the centuries does not mean that we can stop worshiping God just because there's sharks out there in the waters. You see, God never allowed us to say, well, since there are dishonest men who masquerade, or in other words, they disguise themselves as men of God when they aren't, that does not mean that we can stop worshiping the Lord by not coming to worship service anymore. God's not going to accept that excuse on the judgment day, if I can be frank with you here today. This is what Satan wants us to think and do. But we cannot give Satan the, the satisfaction of succeeding, of him turning us away from where salvation really lies, which is the church. We have to realize there is no salvation outside of the church. How do I know that? Ephesians 5 verse 23 tells us, and it tells us plainly if your heart is open unto the word of God here today. The Bible says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Let me tell you something about that scripture right there. A body cannot exist without the head. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. If your head is decapitated, the body is going to die. Oh, amen, somebody. So think about it this way. How can you be a body without the head? You cannot be. So if you're walking away from the church, guess what? You have walked away from the head. And if you have walked away from the head, you have walked away from life. Amen. And if you have walked away from life, you have walked away from eternal life. That's what I'm really talking about. A home in heaven, salvation. And that's the other way you can look at this passage of scripture because the Bible says that Jesus is the savior of the body. Meaning he's saving a group of people. The body is another name. It's short for the church. It's short for the other names of the church in the Bible, the church of the living God. It's short for the being in Christ. And it's short for Romans 16, verse number 16, that tells us salute one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. 
So if you're not a part of the body, you're not a part of the church of Christ. If you walked away because you've been discouraged by somebody else, get encouraged today and get back in the church because you cannot be saved without being a part of the body that's saved by the head who's called Jesus Christ. Anybody know what I'm talking about here today? You see, folks, we must be in the church in order to be saved. And as a result, despite sharks being in the water, the only island of safety is still in the church, no matter what men will do. And also remember, folks, people get, get so tied up in their offerings and things of that nature and scared somebody going to take it from them or take advantage of them. What I want you to do is counter that thought. Counter that thought with this thought. Remember why you give in the first place. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen, I don't know about you elders, but I might have to do some teaching here for a minute. Is that all right, y'all? See, folks, you have to understand there's two reasons that the Bible gives you that you give unto the church. The first reason is, is that people want to hear it today because men have abused it, but it is part of the financial support that we're supposed to give the preacher of the local amen. congregation. How do I know this? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 14 when Paul was standing up for his rights, when Paul was standing up for the rights of every preacher out there, when Paul was revealing the word of God about the financial support we're supposed to give to the preacher, here is what Paul has said. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14, and I believe and know that Paul was talking from the word of God. In other words, God was emanating through him and giving us instructions about the offering. He said according to 1 Corinthians 9, verse 14, even so hath the Lord ordained, that means the Lord appointed, is that all right, y'all? It said, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live the gospel. Amen, somebody. Do they have to be reasonable? Absolutely. The congregation has to be reasonable with them so that neither one of them are, are wolves in sheep's clothing. Either way, that should go. But the other reason that is often neglected when it comes down to the offering that we are to give on every Sunday. The Bible says this in, in, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 and verse number 2, that we're familiar with, but most of the time we're not familiar with why Paul said this. The Bible says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings, when I come, you see, if you notice something, if you poured out the real meaning of what Paul was trying to say, the other reason why we give on every Sunday is so that the church can store up some money for the poor members of the church when they are in need. So think about it this way. When you stop coming to church, you hurt the honest preachers who need your support. And you also hurt the poor members of the church who have no storehouse to come to financially when they are in need. I don't know about you, but I see the American economy changing drastically. I see unemployment everywhere. I see every strip that you go down now, that you see closed businesses that were just prospering a year ago. What am I trying to tell you right now is that the writing is on the wall. The economics of America is changing. Just because you high on the hog right now, don't mean that you won't be in the poorhouse tomorrow. Amen, somebody. Amen, and it man. may end up being you one day that need to come back to the church and say, I need some help keeping my lights on. I need some help to make sure I still have a place to stay. I need some help to make sure that I have food on the table. Amen, somebody. Amen. And these are the things that God says you give for so that when it's your time, or when it's anybody's time, you can come to the church, you can come to the brothers, and we'll be able to have something to give you Amen. when you Amen. are in need. Right, so please. you got to think about that. When you, when you are leaving the church, when you don't worship in the church, you also hurt the church financially. But more importantly, you hurt yourself spiritually. Because heaven won't be your home if you don't keep coming to the worship service. Amen, somebody. Amen. People try to talk around Hebrews 10, 25, where the Bible says, never forsake the assembly of the saints. They try to make all type of excuses about that because the Bible says there till you see the day coming. Now, let me ask you something. Do you know when Jesus is coming? 
Huh? That's what that scripture is talking about. Make sure that you're in worship service. Make sure your attendance is taken by God because Jesus can come back any moment. Amen, somebody. Amen. And that's one of the things that he's going to judge us on, whether we assemble with the saints or not. Amen, somebody. Amen. And see, Jesus can come a thousand years from now or Jesus can come today. Amen, somebody. Do you want Amen. Jesus to catch you in bed? Huh? Do you want Jesus to catch you on the fishing bank? Do you want Jesus to catch you doing anything but worshiping? I don't know about you, but I don't want to take that chance. Amen, somebody. I want him to see me, and I want him to see you, and he be able to say on that judgment day, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen, somebody. I hope you understand where I'm coming from here today. So when you stay away from the church, you go through all these excuses that Satan's given you got to understand that you let the devil win in your life. And many times, uh, in the many ways that he says it, he will keep you out of the church if you are not truly loving God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, as Jesus taught us a long time ago. So again, remember, when you stay away, you hurt the honest preachers out there that really love you, that really love the Lord, and are only doing the right thing. And you also hurt the poor. Because, again, you're taking away the financial resources that they may need when that time comes. Let's move on then here as we shortly come to the close of the last topic, the last point to be made on this occasion. One of the other reasons people say they don't go to church is to, if they say that the church today is full of hypocrites. Let me ask you something. This is truly an unfair assumption about all of God's people. It's really not fair to put everybody in the same category, the same box, as this is truly a stereotype without foundation. For example, think about it this way. And I don't know about you, but I've worked in corporate America all my life. Amen, somebody. And I guarantee you, and I don't, know, I don't care where you're working, if you're a blue collar or a white collar, if you're corporate, it doesn't matter what it is if you work on an assembly line. I guarantee you on your place of employment, you have found a hypocrite somewhere in there. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. I'm sure no matter where you work at, you have found a liar. You have found a cheat. You have found somebody that steals. You have found alcoholics. You have found womanizers everywhere you go. But I'm going to tell you something. Since you know that you got to pay your light bill, huh? Since you know you got to pay your mortgage, since you know you got to pay your rent on your apartment, since you know that your stuff will get repossessed if you don't make your payments, since you know that you need a paycheck, you still go to work amen. with all those hypocrites. Oh, amen, amen somebody. Amen. And you don't stop going to work because you know at the end of the day, you need that paycheck no matter how anybody is acting on your place of employment. Oh, Y'all know what I'm telling the truth here today. People got double standards when it comes to their lives and the church. Amen, somebody. And those double standards are not fair. Let me give you another example. Most people will still go to vote. Oh, amen, somebody. And it's easy to prove. I don't care what your political affiliation may be. I don't care what party you're from. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, Green Party, Libertarian, or Independent. I know that in every party, that's corruption in every last one of them. It's easy to tell in every last one of them. There's corruption in the White House. There's corruption in Congress. There's corruption in the Senate. There's corruption in the House of Representatives. There's corruption in your state and local government everywhere you turn. But do you ever say to yourself, now I'm not going to vote until the government is cleaned up? No, amen, somebody. You don't do that. You know why? Because your vote makes a difference. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you say the church is corrupt, why don't you get in here and help clean it up? Oh, amen, somebody. Maybe you're the one that's supposed to help fix it up, or well, you one of the hypocrites too. Oh, amen, somebody. I didn't mean to say that. That's all right. But the truth is the truth. Let me give you one more example, and we'll move on from here. See, most people have also encountered a kind man or a kind woman somewhere in their lives. Amen, somebody. We went out there to purchase something, and that thing was just as effective as it could be. Amen. Anybody got a bad product? Somewhere out there. Anybody ever bought some food home from the grocery store and it was spoiled by the time you got it home? Amen, somebody. Because you know some of them bushes pull some things over on you. They make that meat look good, but that meat won't last a day in your refrigerator. Amen, somebody. They got little tricks they do in order to get that meat out there and sell it when they know that stuff is bad. Amen, somebody. 
But do you ever say, when you've gotten a bad product, that I'm going to stop shopping altogether? Huh? Do you ever say that I'm going to stop going to the grocery store because I got a bad product? Huh? Do you ever say those that have been able to afford a car, I done had a bunch of lemons. Is that all right, y'all? I done had some bad cars. But I still know I can't walk everywhere. Amen, somebody. So I still need to get a car. Amen. So do you give up on the auto industry? Do you give up on the grocery store? Do you give up on the things that you have to shop for? No. Amen, somebody. Amen. Even though you had a bad experience with them, you still shop, huh? You still go to the grocery store. You still buy vehicles if you have the means in order to do so. See, I don't see nobody here in this parking lot or else in the world, period, that's going to say, oh, I had a bad time shopping, so now I'm going to live off the grid. I'm going to find me an old backwoods cabin somewhere. I'm not going to worry about paying no electricity. I'm going to grow my own food, and I'm going to sew my own clothes just to isolate yourself from the world because you had a bad experience somewhere. I don't know nobody that's going to do that. Anybody know that? Anybody know anybody that's going to do that? Of course not. You see, what you end up doing, you end up being more careful next time, and you continue to shop at a more reputable establishment instead you don't give up on everything just because you had one bad experience so what am i trying to say here as we come to a close the point is is not to worry about hypocrites god is going to take care of them in due time if they don't change you see this is what jesus was talking about in matthew 13 verse 24 to verse number 30 where we talk we call that the parable of the wheat and the chair the, ta the tares that is what that parable is talking about is God is talking about those in the kingdom who are real and who are fake. Amen, somebody. I'm being honest yeah. here today. The wheat is what God wants, symbolically speaking. That's the true and sincere Christian. The tares are ones that grow at the same time as the wheat, look just like them, but when it's time for harvest, there's no fruit there for, for the farmer to take in. And so those, the Bible says, will be taken and, and burned up. Amen, somebody. But the wheat God is going to put in his barn. Let me show you what God says. All you got to do is look at Matthew 13, verse number 30, where Jesus addressed this exact fact. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Of course, your symbols in this Passes the scriptures that the barn is heaven and the tares, which are the imposter wheat or the fake Christians, will burn up, meaning go to eternal punishment. So no matter what other people are doing in the church, our job, my job, your job is to remain wheat by continuing to be faithful to Jesus. And that includes coming to worship service as you are supposed to. See, that's part of the commandment. We just talked about it, Hebrews 10, 25 is also a test of how much you love God. Amen, somebody. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, verse 25, is a test of how committed you really are. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, is really a test of how sincere you really are. Are you for real or are you fake? This is one of the dividing lines that's going to show whether you are wheat or you are tear. Amen, somebody. I know it's not going to be received very well. Even last week, some folks jumped on me online, but I don't care jump on me. Amen, somebody. But the, the truth is going to go out no matter what, right. folks. So, again, if you stay faithful to worship service and everything that God wants you to believe and obey, he's going to rule you as a wheat on the judgment day and not a tear when he comes back again. Instead, again, if you continue to be that wheat, faithful to worship service and everything God has commanded, your eternal bowl will be the heavenly glory. An eternal life that only Jesus can offer will be yours. I believe that's enough for this occasion. We'll continue to go over some of the objections that people have when it comes to going to church, which we know as going to the worship service here. I hope you have the patience in order to continue along this path because we're trying to save a soul. Amen, somebody. We're not going to just let Satan just keep lying and lying and lying without coming back with the rebuttals from the scriptures that we actually know. So again, next week, if the good Lord sees fit, we'll go on part three of why I don't go to church. But of course, we'll transition in thought right now. If you're a child of God and you walk disorderly, you know that the grace of God is still there for you. The mercy of God is still there for you. 
according to Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, and verse number 10. Somebody ought to be excited that God's grace and mercy can be extended to us, even as Christians that have fallen short. All he tells you to do is repent of your sin, to uh, confess your fault to him, and ask him to forgive you in prayer. And he's going to do just that. Thank God he's a graceful and merciful God unto all of us. I don't know about you, but I need him. Amen, somebody. In yeah. fact, I know you need him too. Amen, somebody. Yeah. But nonetheless, if you're not a child of God, you must come to him initially for your salvation. You have to respond by obeying the gospel as the book of Romans tells us, folks. And the Bible starts off in, in talking about the plan of salvation that you have to obey. Not just believe, but obey in order to be saved. It starts off in Romans 10, verse 17, where the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You ought to be asking in your heart right now, what's that word? That word is summarized in John 3, verse number 16. When the Bible says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. My question to you, friend, those under the sound of my voice that have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, have you come to the faith that Jesus literally is the Son of God? Have you come to the faith knowing that since Jesus is the Son of God, He is your Lord and Savior, well, you're on a good road. The next step in the plan of salvation, step number three, is that you've got to put your faith in action. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and verse number uh, 5, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. What Jesus is talking about, He's saying make a commitment to the Christian lifestyle. Make a commitment to live righteously and turn your back on a sinful lifestyle. That's all repentance means. It means a turn from being selfish, turning from being sinful, turning from being rebellious to righteous living in the sight of God. Step number four of the plan of salvation is that you got to make sure God knows that you're not ashamed of him. That's what Jesus talks about in Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Except you confess him before men, you won't be confessed on the judgment day. What that means is, is that on earth, you have to confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, which means you are Lord and Savior. And when you reach that judgment day, he's going to confess you as one of the righteous ones, one that will inherit heaven as your home. You also see that repeated in Romans 10, verse 9 and verse number 10, that with the, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And God is so good that he gave you an example of that. In Acts 8, verse 37, when the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God before God forgave him of his sins, added him to the family of God, put that label of Christian on him, and put that label of saved on him. Because of, after that, he and everybody that wants to be saved have to go down in the watery grave of baptism. That's step five of the plan of salvation. Jesus said it himself in Mark 16, verse number 16. He says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. We well, probably asking yourself, do I have to have myself baptized for salvation? Yes. Peter made that plain as God spoke through him. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 38, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In other words, forgiveness of your sins does not occur until you go down in that watery grave of baptism. The, being added to the, to the body of Christ, meaning being a child of God, being adopted by God into his very own spiritual family, does not occur until you are baptized in the watery grave of baptism. And of course, we know salvation does not occur until you obey God by going down in the watery grave of baptism. We have it set for you right now where you can come down here. Just come down to me right now. And all I'm going to do is ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God so you can give your confession and we'll take you into the building right now. The pool is ready for you. The water is ready for you to start a new life in Christ Jesus. It's there for you to drop all your burdens, to drop the label of unsaved and pick up the category of saved because you'll be added to that and you'll be added to God's family if you'll confess and be baptized here today. And of course, we know just encouragement for us all to stay motivated in Christ. Jesus said in Revelation 2 verse 10 to every Christian that ever lived, including you and I, he said, be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. In other words, when you start the Christian journey, finish it. Keep believing, obeying to the end 
and heaven's going to be your home. We're going to call our song leader up right now to lead a song of invitation. That's to give you an opportunity to make it known that you want to confess Christ today and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Won't you come as together we stand and sing the Lord's invitation? Won't you come? Page 218, there's a fountain free. There's a fountain free, tears for you and me. Let us haste, so oh, haste to his spring. Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain? church say amen one more time amen. as always we want to stand and first with our hearts open and uh, for a sweet embrace unto all of the church and also to uh, read off the prayer requests as our hearts go out in love unto God for the specific names that have been named and brought unto us at this time I'm just going to go through the list right now in no particular order but I also encourage you to pray along with me as we petition to God's throne of grace and mercy on behalf of these people that have identified themselves as having needs uh, uh, for the church to pray for. Uh, the first one is for our dear brother and brother Terrell, uh, Chiquita Duckett for uh, Traveling Grace, uh, Roderick Pearson, uh, Hubert Collins, who is Brother Beck's father, he's in ICU at this time, uh, Sarah Collins, uh, Brother Beck's uh, grandmother's in the hospital at this time, a specific, specific prayer for the Kyle family, the Henry Street family, the Church of Christ here uh, in general. Uh, the Heath family, especially for uh, Brother Croy's uh, brother and Aaron. Uh, Sister Heath's children and their families. Uh, the Sawyers, specifically for Crystal Sawyer, as well as Dan Danielle Sawyer, who's in bereavement at this time. Uh, Sister Ida Sawyer, uh, who's not feeling well, as well as Marie Terrell, who's not feeling well, as well as the Coleman family. Uh, these are the ones that have been specifically mentioned. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a moment to pray, but we'll also pray for each other uh, in the process for those unnamed at this time. Shall we take a moment to pray? Our dear precious Father, we're so thankful for this day. We thank you for Jesus who suffered, died, and rose again, that we may have a chance at eternal life. Father God, let the word of God reign supreme in our hearts for all the members here, but also for those that may have heard our voices over the radio, uh, in the community as we're in open air here today, uh, via Facebook and YouTube, uh, that their hearts would uh, be soft into the word and that it would take uh, root there. And for those that have not obeyed Christ for their salvation, they will come forward and say, what must I do to be saved before it's everlastingly too late? But also, Lord, we're asking for all the names that were mentioned here that you keep them in good cheer, uh, keep them from feeling low and sad and depressed, but instead give them a level of peace and be able to still have joy in the midst of their trials and tribulations. Father God, thank you for our, our elders that have served here for years. Continue to keep them uh, in the hollow of your hands, encouraged, uh, healthy, and uh, just to be able to continue to serve in the matters in which they have been serving. We thank you for that. Um, continue to be with all the brothers here that serve in their own respective ministries in their own way. Continue to develop these gifts, dear Lord, and magnify these gifts in order to bring more glory unto you and to the name of Jesus Christ, dear Father. Bless our sisters that serve other sisters here, too, as well. Uh, bless them with wisdom and knowledge. More of the word of God is, is always, dear Lord. 
uh, that they be able to help each other, be there for each other, their father, um, as they have been doing, and that they can continue and even grow even further. Uh, Father God, be with all the requests that were made specifically for the members of the church and our extended families, dear Father, uh, that were mentioned. Some have come forward that they're struggling in their health. We ask for healing these things. We ask for comfort. We ask for relief in these things. But most of all, we ask for spiritual fortitude beyond these things. Because you know, we know at one, at some time that is, when you see appropriate, we're going to lay this, this body and this burden down one day and pick up a, a building not made with hands that no longer has to go through these things ever again, forevermore, to enjoy the bliss of heaven and eternal life. So Lord, we ask even beyond these physical things that the spiritual things be in order. We're going to do the best that we can. You told us that the spirit is willing. We're willing, dear Father, but the flesh is weak. So we need your empowerment. We need your help to overcome all these things as well. Our dear precious Father, we ask that you be with um, those that are traveling, especially those that have mentioned travel, that they have safe travel to and from their various destinations, dear Father. Bless their families also to stay together, stay unified, um, dear Father, and that they be exemplary examples, that is, of what a Christian family is supposed to. We pray the same things for all of our, our marriages, Lord, that the onlookers from the church can see us as good examples, but also those outside the church can see us as different from the world in that we love our wives as husbands like Christ loved the church and our wives respect us as the scriptures have said and our children respect us and we do right by them as well, dear Father. Father God, there was a specific request for the church in general. Dear Lord, uh, especially here at Henry Street, we ask that all the congregations, including here, grow numerically and spiritually and that we be truly that house on a hill that cannot be hidden, and that we'll be lights unto the world, dear Father, that they see us for sure as the Lord's church, from our behavior and the love we share for each other and for everyone else. Our dear and precious Father, we ask that you help us, dear Lord, in our lives, being examples, even our words, dear Lord, that uh, we help those that object to coming to worship service, that they know the truth, dear Father, and come before it's everlastingly too late, especially if that may be the only time they ever hear the gospel, that they have a chance to be saved. Father God, we ask that the rest of the service be blessed in a, in a capacity where it's done. Please and acceptable in your sight. Thanks for keeping the weather to a, a, a degree, dear Lord, that uh, we still can be out here, dear Father, and not have inclement weather. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. So again, I want to thank you for your time, your attention, and for giving God the grace, I mean, giving God the worship and praise that he so rightly deserves, of course, and thanks for his grace and mercy for all of us. So we'll call the brothers up to complete the service at this time. God bless you. My heart is with you. My wife and I love you all, and pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 where the Apostle Paul tells us that we should give from the heart not grudgingly or a necessity um, but we should give cheerfully um, and also um, the, he tells us um, in verse 6 that we should give um, bountifully because we know that if we give bountifully then we will reap bountifully but if we give sparingly we'll also reap sparingly uh, many have already given, um, but if you have not given, please raise your hand and one of the brothers will come to your vehicle and um, collect your offering. And if you would like to give electronically, you may do so using Cash App. Um, and our handle once again is the dollar sign 
capital H uh, with Henry Street. Yeah, that's capital H, capital S, then S T, and then C O C. So it's H E N R Y S T C O C. Um, but at this time, let us give thanks for the offering that has been collected. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you at this time saying thank you so much for your, your grace and your mercy. Thank you so much for the blessings that you have given us financially. Um, we ask that you continue to bless us in the same way. And we ask that you will be with those who are experiencing hard times at this time. Um, we ask that you will be with them and help us to be able to help them out uh, as they struggle financially due to the economy. Um, but God, we thank you for this offering that has been gathered, and we pray that we use it in the wisest way possible so that we can further the gospel, not only here but also abroad, but also be uh, able to help those that are in need. The Senior Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, upon the first day of the week, we are commanded to give, excuse me, to partake of the Lord's Supper. Um, we know that the Lord's Supper uh, is a meal that was instituted by Jesus with his disciples um, that commemorates the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, and so, uh, we're given a scriptural reference of how to partake of the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse, where the Apostle Paul wrote. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time saying thank you so much for your son. Um, son that you sent down from heaven to Calvary to die upon the cross for all of our sins. And we pray that as we partake of the, uh, the bread which represents his body, that we will do so with our hearts and our minds, reflecting back upon his sacrifice for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. God, is once again that we come to you to say thank you for your son, Jesus. And we especially thank you for this fruit of the vine, which represents his blood, his soul-redeeming blood, that was shed upon the cross for our sins. And we pray that as we partake of this, that we'll be thinking about the sacrifice that he made for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. That concludes this portion of the service, and we will now have our benediction and the closing hymn. Excuse me, closing prayer. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. And I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And oh, I'll be somewhere to uh, thank Brother Norwood for the message this morning. As always, he did a great job. And certainly, we just appreciate his hard work here. And we, again, we appreciate everyone for coming. Uh, if you can, invite someone else to come so that yeah. when we are back in the building, then uh, we can uh, have them back in with us.
Uh, let us pray at this time. But before uh, I do the closing prayer, I, I just want to encourage everyone to, uh, if you know somebody that is not registered to vote, encourage people to, yeah. to vote. We don't tell people who to vote for, but they, they have a civic duty to vote. And, and we would like to just have everybody that don't care start caring Amen. And, and go ahead and vote. Encourage someone to go to the poll. Uh, let us pray. <clears throat> the eternal and great God of heaven, we bow this time just acknowledging your greatness, knowing that you are God and besides you there is no God. We bow this morning just thanking you for this opportunity to come together to share in another worship service and we just Thank you for all the great things that you've done. We just uh, ask that you bless every individual that came together this morning, everyone that was listening. We just ask that you continue to bless them, keep them, keep us uh, uh, encouraging one another. And, and we just pray that you would help us to be better servants in your vineyard. We ask Heavenly Father that you bless those who are sick and afflicted this morning, wherever they are. We know that you know who the sick are, and we know that you're able to help them. Therefore, we call on you to help all of those who are sick. And we pray for those who are teaching the gospel everywhere. We pray especially for those who are uh, abroad, who are uh, teaching your word, those who are in Nigeria, who are bringing many souls to, uh, to the kingdom. And we pray that you bless them, enable them to continue to do the things that they're doing. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with those who are afflicted with the uh, coronavirus. And we just pray that you will help those scientists who want to uh, get a vaccine to be with them, help them to continue to work hard to get a vaccine in order that we may eliminate this virus. And we just pray that you'll be with them. But we know that you're able to do that. And we just uh, continue to call on you and depend on you for uh, casting all our cares upon you. But as we go our separate ways, go with us, protect and guide us, and allow us to come together again at the next appointed time. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, good job, brother. Appreciate you guys. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll go up there.